All right, in this video, we're going to learn how to prepare the contentions for our case. So before we get started, what are the contentions? Well, the contentions in your case are basically the main arguments that you're trying to make. They're like the two or three points in the body of an essay. You know, when you have an essay, you have three points of argumentation. Those in a debate case are the contentions. The contentions are your arguments. They're the three, two or three main reasons why you should win. And the reason why they're called contentions is because you're, you're making contentions for your side. For example, if you're supporting free trade, you might say, I contend that free trade uh, leads to prosperity. That, that might be one of your main arguments. It's one of your contentions because you're contending that. That's why it's called a contention. It's basically another word for argument. So in your case, you're probably gonna have about three contentions. Each contention has a what we call a tag. And basically what that just means is it, ha it has a name. So if we go back to the essay analogy, when you have three points in an essay, you have a topic sentence, right? Saying what the, 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 what the point is going to be about. And in a contention, you have a tag sentence that says what the contention is going to be about. So you wanna keep these contentions short, clear, and to the point. And an example of a tag might be, for example, you might say contention one, free trade leads to prosperity. So the tag there is free trade leads to prosperity. Just a really quick summary of what the contention is going to be saying. Now you also wanna make sure your value and your criterion play into developing your three contentions. They should always be somewhere in your three contentions because again, the value and criterion are really central to your debate and they're, they're supposed to be involved in your argumentation. So it makes sense that in your contentions or your arguments, you would involve the value and criterion. All right, so how exactly do we craft the three contentions? What should your three contentions be? What should your main arguments be? What are the reasons why you should win the round? Well, let's go back to the basics here. To win the debate round, according to the, the way LD debate works, you really need to prove three things. The first thing you need to prove is that your value is the most important thing we should care about. Your value is the one thing we all want. That's what we should base our decision on. And that first thing is very important because again, LD is a values debate. Your value is the reason why your side should be chosen. You need to establish that your value is highest. So the second thing you need to prove is that your side upholds your value. Your side upholds the most important thing that we all care about. And so you wanna prove that your side upholds the value and then argue that since your side gets us what we all want, the value, therefore you should win. Because if we prove that your value is the highest value, it's the most important thing, and your side gets us the most important thing, that means your side is the best side, according to the way LD works. So that's the second thing you should prove. And the third thing you should prove is that your opponent's side does not uphold the value, the one thing we all want. He should not win the debate round because he does not get us this thing that we want. He does not get us the value. So those are really the three things that really in every LD debate round you need to prove. This holds true for every round, no matter what the arguments are, no matter what the resolution is. So the best way to craft your contentions or your main arguments is around these three things. So let's go back to them. Now, normally you could have three contentions, and I believe this is the best way to lay out your contentions. There are other ways. This isn't a hard and fast rule. It's more of a guideline. There's some flexibility. You can change this if you want to, but this is a general guideline for how you can make your contentions. Your first contention can explain how your value is the highest value in the round. So if you have a value of prosperity, you might say contention one, prosperity is the highest value. That's your contention one. Your contention two can play into the second thing we talked about, how your side of the resolution leads to your criterion and your value. So if I'm on the side of free trade and I'm valuing prosperity, I might say contention two, free trade leads to prosperity. Free trade leads to prosperity. And that's assuming I don't have a criterion. If I had another criterion, I would say free trade and criterion leads to prosperity or something along those lines. You can tweak the wording however you like, but something like that. And then for the third thing we looked at, uh, how your opponent's side doesn't uphold your value, you can say contention three, fair trade does not lead to prosperity or fair trade harms prosperity or something like that. And therefore fair trade should be rejected and not win the round. So th those are basically uh, the three way, the, your three contentions, that's a general guideline. That's what most people end up doing in debate or LD debate, because that really makes the most sense. So think about how you're going to elaborate on these arguments and your contentions, whatever you decide that those contentions will be. Now, within each contention, so we figured out the titles of each contention, what they're gonna be about. Now let's move into the body of the contentions. Within each contention, you need three things again. You need a claim, a warrant, and an impact. 
a claim, a warrant, and an impact. So the claim is basically just in, in a short sentence what you're trying to say. So I guess the claim, again, for, for your first contention that prosperity is the highest value, your claim would be that prosperity is the highest value. And obviously you would want to change the wording. You don't want to say contention one, prosperity is the highest value. Prosperity is the highest value. So that, that's kind of redundant. But you, you just need to have a claim that just says what you're going to say. The second thing you need is a warrant, and the warrant is basically just an explanation as to why your claim is true. You're explaining your claim. You're explaining why prosperity is the highest value. You're giving examples of how prosperity is the highest value. You can give statistics, you can give examples, you can give logic to show that prosperity is the highest value. The warrant just shows why the claim is true. And then the impact is the third thing, and that's very important. The impact basically answers the question of who cares? So the impact tells you why it matters. So the impact comes at the end and it tells you, you might say something like, since prosperity is the highest value, that's what we have to be looking at for the rest of this round. It all boils down to which side leads us to prosperity. You need all three of these components in your contentions and really in every argument you make. Um, for, if you're missing just one of these, your argument can really fall apart. For example, let's look at what happens if we have an empty claim. So if we just have a claim with no warrant and no impact and we only have a claim. Um, and I remember a great example of this from a few years ago. Uh, if you were paying attention to the computer world around 2015, you might remember how Windows 10 came out and all of a sudden Microsoft did this really weird thing and said, you know what, we're gonna upgrade everyone's computers to Windows 10 and maybe your parents did that. And so everyone was upgrading to Windows 10 and then everyone realized that they didn't like Windows 10 and that the Windows 10 upgrades were destroying their computers or not working out and messing things up. Um, so an article came out around this time that said something along the lines of, quote, Windows 10 could cause Sudanese deaths, end quote. Now, if you just hear that, 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 that sentence, Windows 10 causes Sudanese deaths, that doesn't really make sense. I mean, even with all the problems Windows 10 was causing, they weren't really causing people to die. That, that doesn't make sense. So that empty claim, that claim without a warrant, without an explanation, made absolutely no sense, and it wasn't convincing. If you have an empty claim with no support, that's not good, because that's not going to be persuasive, because people won't believe what you're saying, because they have no reason to. So you need a claim, but you also need a warrant to back up your claim. So in the example of the Windows 10 Sudanese death article, it, it turned out that really the warrant was that, I guess, um, these computers upgraded to Windows 10, and as a result, so these computers were working for some kind of organization that kept track of mosquitoes, I believe, and when they upgraded to Windows 10, the computers went down, and I believe this was in Africa somewhere, so all of a sudden people didn't know where the mosquitoes were, and the mosquitoes started biting people, and they had um, diseases that were deadly, or something along those lines. I don't remember the exact details of the article, but anyway, it made a lot more sense once you had the warrant, so you need to have the warrant, not just the claim. And then you also need to have the impact, of course, saying why, the, uh, why, why this, what you're saying matters. And sometimes the impact is the same as the claim. Like for the Sudanese death article, it's obvious that death is bad. You don't need to add an extra impact sentence saying, the impact is death is bad. Everybody knows that. So sometimes you can leave out the impact if it's already strongly implied in the claim or the warrant. But the impact is also important. Um, normally the impact is important because otherwise the judge is going to ask, who cares? And they're not going to give your point any significance. So for another example, say that I tell you my car got wet and I explain how it rained last night and so my car got wet. I have a claim and I have a warrant, but I don't have an impact. So if I told you that my car got wet because it rained last night, you're just gonna look at me and say, okay, who cares, no big deal. Your car got wet, just dry it off. So you need an impact to get people to care about your arguments. You could say something like, my car got wet, that's my claim, and, uh, and because it rained last night, that's the warrant maybe, and the impact is the water went into the window and spoiled the carpeting, and now I have to get new carpeting. Now there's an impact. Now we know why this matters. Spoiled carpeting is the impact. So you always need to have a claim, a warrant, and an impact, especially in all the arguments you're making in debate. The impact is very important, because otherwise, if you're making a claim how uh, free trade leads to prosperity, the judge might just ask, who cares? Why does that matter? You have to show them why it matters, so they'll actually use that as a reason to vote for your side. So that's the basic, uh, the basic steps towards figuring out your contention. So why don't you start to figure out your own contentions based on this model? And we're going to look at this more in the next section about examples. We're going to put some examples in your contention. So you don't have to completely finish this, but just start. Just at least lay out the tags and sort of what you're going to try to say. But we're, uh, we're going to come up with the warrant for these contentions sort of in the next section when we talk about real life examples. So I guess you can skip that for now uh, if you'd like. It, it, it's up to you. But anyway, just figure out your contentions based on this model. Put them in 
your outline. This is step seven in the handout that I gave you on the class website. So go ahead and stop right now and uh, go ahead and figure out what your contentions might be.